Hi, in this video, we'll be discussing two topics. The first topic being trigonometric ratios and double angles. The second one will be calculus involving differentiation of logarithmic functions and trigonometric functions, as well as integration using the reverse of differentiation. The question goes, in part A of the question, show that 1 plus secant 2x over tangent 2x is equal to cotangent x. And that's a 4 marks question. In part B of this question, given that y equals to ln of sine nx, where n is a constant, find an expression for dy over dx, and that's a 2 marks question. In the final part of this question, using the results from both part A and B, you are to find the integration of 1 plus secant 8x divided by 2 tangent 8x minus 1 dx. And that's a 3 marks question. You might want to pause this video to give this question a try. And when you're ready, keep watching. For the first part of this question, we are to do a proving of these equations. Um, Whenever we do a proving equation, we will always start from the more complicated side to prove to the simpler side. So the more complicated side will be, in this case, the left-hand side. So we prove the left to the right-hand side. So let us analyze the left-hand side. In the left-hand side, we have a reciprocal trigonometric ratio of secant 2x that can be expressed as 1 over cos 2x. And in the denominator, the tangent 2x can be expressed as a sine 2x over cos 2x. So the cos 2x um, can therefore be cancelled out. Um, and after that, we will continue with converting the 2x angle, all right, the double angle of 2x into a single angle of x like the one on the right-hand side. Um, on the right-hand side, we have a cotangent x. There is also another reciprocal trigonometric ratio. Um, that is a 1 over tangent x, and that is equivalent to cosine x over sine x. And that should be the last second step before we complete this proving. So that should be the general direction of solving this part A question. So let us first start off with the going through the formulas of the trigonometric ratios like this. So in the first set of formulas for the trigonometric ratios, you'll be using tangent 2x, and that will be tangent theta to be a sine over cos. Um, we are also provided a secant 2x. So secant theta is the same as 1 over cos. It's a reciprocal trigonometric ratio. So how do we tell is we look at the third letter of secant theta. It's a C, so it will be a 1 over cos. Likewise, on the right, we are provided with a cotangent x, that means cotangent theta. And the third letter is a t, this is another trigonometric reciprocal. So over here, third letter is a t, so it will be 1 over tangent, which is the same as cosine over sine. Now with this set of formulas, we can start off with our part A step 1. So in our part A step 1, the very first step is to convert the numerator of 1 plus second 2x into 1 plus 1 over cos 2x highlighted in blue. There is a divide over here, divide, tangent 2x in yellow is now converted into sine 2x over cos 2x in yellow. So um, within this first pair of brackets over here, I'm going to make it into a single denominator or single fractions. Um, there is a cosine 2x plus 1 on top and a cos 2x at the bottom. So you have a cos 2x at the bottom and uh, over here, um, if I'm to flip this because of the divide, you have a cos 2x over sine 2x. So cos 2x on top divided by cos 2x below, we will end up having cosine 2x plus 1 divided by sine 2x after some form of manipulations. Now as you can see here, we have a double angle of 2x, we have a double angle of 2x here. So let us go back to our formula whereby we talk about the double angle. So sine 2x in green can be expressed as sine 2a to be equal to 2 sine a cos a. And over here, we have a cos 2x, so cos 2a formulas, there is three of them. It be cosine square a minus sine square a, 2 cosine square a minus 1, 1 minus 2 sine square a. Now, the idea is to uh, ask ourselves which one do we apply, okay? Um, since cosine 2x has a few formulas here, we want to first convert the denominator part of sine 2x first like this. So if you convert the denominator of sine 2x, there's only one formula, so it'll be equivalent to a 2 sine x cos x. Now for the top part, as you can see here, cosine 2x plus 1. Now what do we use? First thing, it involves a plus 1. 
all right it involves a plus once so um the formulas that involves a once will be the last two formulas here as highlighted here at the same time if you take a peek at the right hand side um, we are supposed to have the last second step to be a cosine x over sine x using this formula so my top part must be a cosine in other words i should be converting a cosine 2a to a co two cosine square a so using this formula all right cosine 2a to be equivalent to two cosine square a minus one now if i'm to shift the negative ones to the left hand side becomes cosine 2a plus one which is like this will be equivalent to two cos square a so in this case it would be two cos square x now over here in the next step, we can therefore cancel away the two cosine x to the top and bottom, leaving us with a cosine x over sine x. Cosine x over sine x using the last reciprocal trigonometric ratio, we should then be able to write down as a cotangent x. And that is indeed the right hand side of this question. And that's the proving for part A. Now moving on to part B of this question. Given that y equals the ln of sine nx, where n is a constant, um, you have to find an expression for dy over dx. So by dy over dx, let us first recap on our differentiation of ln logarithmic functions as well as trigonometric functions of sine. So let's go back to the formulas over here. By differentiation of logarithmic functions, in other words, differentiate ln fx with respect to x, will give us the result of f prime x divided by f of x. So what we do is we copy down the function within the ln as the denominator and we differentiate the function within the ln. It will give us the f prime of x and that will be the numerator. And that's the differentiation of logarithmic functions formula. Um, this question also involves a sine, so there will be a chain rule involved. So, so let's us go back on the differentiation of trigonometric function of sine in this case. So differentiation of trigonometric functions over here, if you have to differentiate sine fx, so differentiate sine is actually a cos with the same angle and multiplied by the differentiation result of the angle in this case, f of x is differentiated to be a f prime of x like this. So with this in mind, all right, with these two formulas in mind, we can start with our part b. It's a very simple two marks question like this. So in our part b over here, differentiate y with respect to x in this case will therefore give us first thing the original equations have a ln of a uh, sine nx so we copy down the function within the ln in this case that will be a denominator so there will be a sine nx in the denominator and for the numerator it will be a differentiation result of what's within the ln so if you differentiate sine in this case it will give us a cosine fx in this case cosine nx and at the same time differentiating the angle of nx will therefore give us an n. So as you can see here, dy over dx will give us the result of n cosine nx divided by sine nx. Let's not forget that cosine nx divided by sine nx is the same as over here, cotangent theta. So it'll be n cotangent nx like this. And that's the answer for part B. Now moving on to part C of this question, we are to use the results from parts A and B to do an integration of this part. So let us first start off by finding what is the difference, what we can use in this case, in order to, for us to do these integrations using the reverse of differentiation. So in part C of this question, um, this is the question, so we integrate this whole thing with respect to x. So what I do here is that um, there is a 1 plus secant 8x and there is a tangent 8x. So um, I decide to split into two integration components. So integrate this part, minus away integrates the one, the x. Um, when I integrate this part at the same time, I took out a half because the two is not really wanted. So I took out a half like this. Now, the one that is highlighted in purple in the next step over here, as we can see is that um, it is very similar to the form in part A. So instead of writing as a one plus secant two x, they now have it as a one plus secant eight x. And instead of having as a tangent 2x, they now have a tangent 8x like this. All right. So other than angle, there is difference. It is in pretty much in the in the left hand side equation of part a. Minus the integration of 1 dx. Now this integration is very simple, so I'm not so worried. So in the next step over here, now 1 plus secant ax divided by tangent ax is in the form of the left hand side. So if this is a 2x angle on the left, the angle on the right is an x. So 
over here, if this is an 8x angle, that means the angle on the right will therefore be a 4x. So replacing your cotangent x will be a cotangent 4x like this. So we have the first part out. So the next step of this will be equals to half integrates cotangent 4x dx minus the weight integration of 1 dx like this. Now in the next step of this, we can realize that for cotangent 4x over here, we can use the differentiation result over here. So what happens is that uh, we need to have an n cotangent nx. If we are to integrate n cotangent nx, it should give us the result of ln sine nx because using the reverse of differentiation to do integrations. So we want to integrate this form. Now, as you can see, we are having a cotangent 4x. We are not having a 4 cotangent 4x as in this form. So we need to multiply by a 4 here. Um, if we multiply by a 4 here, we must divide by a 4 here. So as you can see here, this is 1 integrate cotangent 4x. This is a half integrate cotangent 4x, I mean. And this is a 1 over 8 times 4. It's still a half cotangent 4x. But we have already converted into a 4 cotangent 4x because in the greens, that is stuff out in greens, we're going to use back this part here. So using the integration of 4 cotangent 4x, we can know that it will be equals to ln sine 4x in the next step. So in the next step over here, 1 over 8, ln sine 4x, integrate 1 will be a negative x, negative 1 will be a negative x, plus a c, where c is the arbitrary constant. And that's the answer for this part c. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something again, and see you in the next one.